everybody. Hey, everybody. How's it going? <laughs> um, so we are pretty jaded. Uh, and our question is, what, uh, like, what have you been learning this week? Um, just to kind of introduce some things, uh, evil comes in many forms, uh, whether that be within ourselves, um, uh, from our free will, like I can go out there and stab somebody. And that would be from my own free will. I can just cause that and uh, kill them. Um, there's um, natural evil like hurricanes and tornadoes and what have you. Also, the question of a good God versus evil. So, evil exists. So, um, if a God is truly good and all powerful, exist. Um, and then obviously there's other natural evils that we can see. And we got this video. Let's play. We live in a world festering with moral evil. A world of wars, torture, rape, murder, and other acts of meaningless violence. In every city in the world every day, there are people deliberately inflicting pain on humans and other animals and even enjoying others' suffering. There's also natural evil, such as disease, famine, floods, and earthquakes. This is terrible, but undeniable. For anyone who believes in the existence of a benevolent God, who is also all-knowing and all-powerful, this presents a powerful challenge, a problem, the problem of evil. How could a good God allow anyone to do such horrific things? If God is all-knowing, then he or she or it is completely aware of what's going on, and if all-powerful, could easily stop it. Yet the thunderbolts don't come. Many atheists have taken the existence of so much evil as conclusive proof that there can't be a good God, and that there probably isn't a God at all. The problem of evil seems to be a genuine problem for anyone who wants to believe that there is. One response to the free will defense is this. God could have created human beings that always did the right thing, never harmed anyone else, never went astray, but that would have made us automatons, pre-programmed robots. It's far better to have free will with the genuine risk that some people will end up evil than to live in a world without choice. That's the claim. Victims of Caligula, Genghis Khan, Hitler, Stalin, Mao Zedong, Pol Pot, Saddam Hussein, and the rest might disagree. And even if you accept the free will defense, it doesn't explain natural evil. So I think it's that one of the main sources we can be identified with is human beings. Crash Course Philosophy is brought to you by Squarespace. It's something that we enact in our day-to-day -day lives and basically something that we pride ourselves on as Americans. Uh, but this free will has the power to come through evil, which we often see enacted in practice. So as many of you guys know, John Locke had a blank slate theory, which essentially says that when you're born, you are a blank slate and you can only apply your environment to what surrounds you. So depending on this environment, it can basically form your idea of right and wrong and has the power to affect your behavior in the future. So basically, a person can become evil based on what they have experienced through the, throughout their life. This is often where we see the arising of acts of violence and acts of humaneness, which is what Jordan Butler would say is the evil. Uh, a real life example of this comes from evil genius. Um, the Washington Post said that, in describing uh, school shootings, they said, they are not simply abused children experience multiple difficulties that cause intensely overwhelming and stressful lives. So generally, this quote shows that free will can cause you evil. Our decisions on how we should behave and on how the, act, the actions we partake in are basically molded by our environment. So depending on these surroundings, our acts of free will can be right or wrong, and when the environment has a negative effect on us, this is often when we see the arising of 
one free will. Um, I'm going to keep talking about abortion. So the naturally born ability of free will, we have choices between, between good and evil. And one of those choices is to have an abortion. And abortion is a touchy topic of our generation and is considered an evil. So why is abortion evil? One of the reasons why is it offends God. So God is this creator who creates all of us. He only puts humans on this earth, and we are kind of disregarding his power by getting rid of a baby who isn't born yet. So we're basically not letting this child into the, the, to the world, not seeing what he or she could do, and kind of just disregarding who they are as a person. Because right after uh, contraception, it is considered a person within the, the woman's womb. So therefore, we are killing women. And that all started with uh, Wade versus Roe in 1973, which gave us the ability to um, have women choose to have an abortion or not. And it is called an unnoticed war, because since then, the, um, they have killed about 67 of, in Americans. So that's just in the US alone. And there's probably millions, billions more around the world. Um, abortion is also unsafe. So Life Dynamics did a poll in um, 1973, and it said that after abortion, 347 women have died due to giving abortion, because having an abortion. And it also, after an abortion, it causes cancer, depression, and suicide due to the stress of the pills, the timing you need to do it. And there is a 50% chance, more chance, of women having breast cancer after giving an abortion. And again, we don't take into account the person's uh, baby could be. So if you give an abortion, you may not have a little child in a shark suit on the beach. And also, for women who can't have children, um, having an abortion, you can still, um, so having an abortion, you can still the baby. And in 2002, there are about 2.6 million um, mothers or women looking for children, and only about 1% got a baby just for all the mass amount of um, abortions. And this just shows that our choice of free will doesn't affect its people and doesn't affect, it affects others and not just ourselves. Okay, so Ross and I are going to talk about the So the existence of evil makes God and religion uh, very questionable, and many people believe that, like, how could a God let so much evil come into this world? And from a Christian point of view, uh, in the book of Genesis it says, "You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good." An example of this is when Jesus died on the cross. Uh, God meant it. God meant it for good by Him wanting, by Jesus dying on the cross, He meant to save us all save all of us, but uh, men, or uh, because human nature is just naturally good, we want to help others to do bad, so other people and the majority usually rules, so then they do the good because we are God's children. Alright, so then uh, in Buddhism, uh, Buddhism is a naturally good religion, but there is still evil in it, which comes in the form of nirvana and karma, or the karma which does karma. So getting good and wanting to seek it. So the Buddha would say once if a person spiritually goes into hell, I will return to them the perfection of the boundless love and they will be very nice to me and they will not be able to take it away from me. So um, uh, in, in order to Thank you. 
religion or something against it and they're committed to the truth of it. And I believe that like my perspective is that um, how it's looked at. Whereas I would think that my advice for how to call that, I would say would be um, not so much as violent fighting, but fight for what you believe in. Um, and for me, I certainly strive for love, but just like in many other cases, there are acknowledgments going um, through it. I was when I was researching, there was a lot of people who um, were asking if violence is committed towards us, should we not respond in defense or defending ourselves? And the way that the Taoists would respond is um, those who make the other are strong, those who make themselves are weak. Um, this is a Tao sage named Pastor Thirty Three, and I believe. trying to be better than others, you can cause more problems, and that can lead to violence. Right. So we're we'll wrapping this up a little bit. Um, let's, we talked about free will, and we touched on some of these uh, different ways.